Hello there, thank you for watching. A good friend suggested that I share a little of my journey in learning Chinese metaphysics. So, well, why not? This is my first sharing, the five things that learning Fatu had taught me. And I hope you'll enjoy it. Nice to meet you. My name is Pauline Chang and I am a Fatu coach. Now first, a little about me. I am a Malaysian of Chinese descent. Yes, a part of the Chinese diaspora. To a certain extent, Chinese metaphysics plays a significant role in the overseas Chinese diaspora. Doesn't exactly rule our lives, but we are certainly aware of it. Well, I have been interested in Chinese metaphysics for as long as I can remember. When I was a kid, if you're old enough like me, I used to watch a Hong Kong series such as The Legends of the Condor Heroes. And as I grew up, the interest expanded to history. Just a side note, yeah, I really am a history buff. English history, Chinese history, Malaysian history, I love them all. So I started reading classics like, well, like this one. But weirdly, it wasn't the emperors and generals that fascinated me. Instead, it was the strategists, the tacticians, the thinkers who captured my imagination. Sima Qian, who literally lost his balls to finish this book. Zhang Yi, if you were to read The Art of War, Zhang, Zhang Yi's name is inside here. He has a lot of commentary on the art of war. Han Xin, who helped found the Han Dynasty, dynasty and well, lost his head for his troubles. And if you know about the Three Kingdoms, there's Zhuge Liang, who literally gave his all for love of a dying empire. The enigmatic Sima Yi, who was Zhuge Liang's nemesis for many, many years. And let's not forget Mr. Liu Bo Wen, who led wars and somehow still managed to find time to write numerous books on Ba Zi that we study today, like the, the, the Di Tian Su, right? So apart from being strategists and tac tacticians, the guys that I mentioned were renowned metaphysics masters. But it stayed merely an interest for many, many years, for me. Until 2014, when something happened. See, it always starts with something happened. No, it wasn't something bad. Instead, it was the complete opposite. I went through this crazy three-month period in 2014 that felt like I was on fire. Everything I touched literally turned to gold. So basically, I got lucky. Well, during that time, somehow, instinctively, I did what I was supposed to to make the most of the time. But also, luckily, I was smart enough to realize that all this success wasn't just me. Something else was happening. So I got curious. I wanted to know what happened. I wanted to know how can I know if it will happen again. I wanted to know what can I do to prolong the effects of that period. Well, yes, basically, yep, I got greedy. So that was when I really got down to studying the art for real because that curiosity was literally eating me up inside. I couldn't, I could, I couldn't delay it anymore and now here I am many years later, sharing with you the five key things that learning Fatu had taught me. Number one, there is no good or bad chart, only the best use of a chart. In other words, we use your chart as a tool to help you reach your goal. All right, so for example, if what you want to be is a forex trader, then we use what we have in your chart to make you the best forex trader there can be. Now, there is a lovely term in Ba Zi that I really like. It refers to the owner of the chart as the day master or the life master. It's called Meng Ji. This term itself indicates control. The control of your destiny is in your hands. Number two, let's not wait for good timing. There is always a solution. So what if you happen to stumble into a bad 10-year uh, luck pillar, you know, a bad one? Oh, what then? Wait 10 years? Really? Can you afford 10 years? So there is always a solution. However, I must let you know, you may not like the solution because it may require you to pick up a skill <coughs> that you may have little affinity with. So that, the, that discomfort causes resistance. But here's the thing though, you only suffer when you resist change, which leads me to the next point. Number three, once you activate a skill, it's yours forever. For this point, <clears throat> let me again share, uh, add, add in a personal experience. In my chart, in my own chart, my eating god is next to useless, really. 
Yet here I am, I've been earning a living by creating content, by writing for decades. So to the point that many people mistakenly think that the eating god is my main profile. It's not. But again, well, I got lucky. In my youth, I activated this skill by learning it and practicing it. <clears throat> and this is what I use to this day, even though in my chart, this profile is not strong at all. Number four, this is really important. I finally figured out the real meaning of the Tai Chi behind me. A uh, rudimentary understanding of the Tai Chi is that it's good versus evil, maybe light versus dark. Actually, what it is, is the law of cause and effect. For every effect you want in your life, there must be a cause. For every effect that you are uh, experiencing right now, there will also have been a cause. And last but not least, the one thing science can never measure, no metaphysics can measure this, the human will. At the end of the day, as a puzzle coach, my task is simply to show you your true potential and capacity, to help you gain that awareness, because awareness is the first step to creating change. And well, while we're talking about life transformation, let's agree that it's not something that happens overnight. It's small incremental changes made one on top of the other that will lead to lasting change. So finally, if you want to know, when is that good timing coming? How can you hasten it? What skills will you need to make the most of it? Well, drop me a message either on Facebook, through my website, or just email me. And that ends my first sharing about my personal journey in Chinese metaphysics. Thank you for watching. Don't forget, like and subscribe. Thank you.